Greetings and salutations, everybody. I'm Andrew from Team Respawn. So the Season 11 patch notes have been uh, finalized. This update is launching uh, today, July 18th, 17th, whatever in your calendar and your time zone you're looking for. Um, it's being released uh, on the 18th um, for Xbox One and PC. Uh, there's been a ton of feedback and testing for this one, and everyone seems to be pretty happy with it. Uh, as always, links in the description if you want to follow along. Uh, the one I did previously was like the patch preview. Uh, this one is the finalized. So this is what actually is being pushed to your game. Um, and like everything has changed. So uh, I'm going to try and not waste your entire adult life uh, with me talking about all this stuff. So I'm going to go through it as quickly as possible. Um, so for global things that have changed, the, the title is now 100% crossplay enabled. So they're removing 2v2 war crossplay. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. They're adding 2v2 war crossplay and removing non-crossplay 3v3 war on Xbox One. So now everything is crossplay no matter what players you're playing on Halo Wars 2, which is awesome. Um, I'm really interested to see how the um, 2v2 war crossplay stuff is. Because I love 2v2 in Halo Wars, but I hate playing ranked 2v2 in Halo Wars. So um, that will be chunderful for sure. So now they're talking about overall things for the UNSC. Uh, for Warthogs, they say they've been underperforming. So they're giving them a damage per second and health increase of 5% each, which will be nice. For Kodiaks, uh, their build time has been reduced by 10%. Um, so they're a little bit too ineffective. Um, so for the Jackrabbits, the line of sight has been increased to the Spotter Drone and the Modifier versus Scouts have been increased from 1.4 to 1.7. Uh, for Marines, the Combat Tech Engineer is a beastly upgrade for the Marines. I agree. Um, however, the Rockets were too impactful against vehicles. So um, it's been changed from the Rockets to match the Marines' base damage. Um, so the rocket does the same damage as the marines themselves. Um, so it's not two anti-vehicles, is what they're saying. For global things for the banished, um, for the rangers, the elite rangers, this is something that's been like been talked about for forever, and it's finally happening. They're adding a third elite ranger to the squad. However, they're nerfing it uh, for each individual elite ranger to um, make it so you didn't just get a, you know, a third buff to the squad. Uh, so the damage per second has been reduced by 25%, and the base health has been reduced by 20% to compensate for the added unit. Um, so they're, they are better, um, but they're a little weaker at the same time. For blister backs, their health has been increased by 10%. Uh, this is because they say they die too easily. Now we're moving on to the leaders, and like they've changed every single leader ever. So this is going to take a while, but here we go. They're starting with Cutter. Um, they want to make the damage versus vehicles increase by 15% and the damage versus infantry increase by 20%. Uh, this is for the Spartan Jerome hero unit. That's all they're changing for Cutter. For Isabel, they're making her more thick. We can end the video now. Okay, just kidding. So um, for Isabel, they're saying that the Mac Blast is uh, too shitty, which I agree. So they're increasing to make Isabel great again. Um, the Mac Blast has been increased by 10% on level 1, 7% uh, on level 2, and 5% on level 3. These are all damage buffs. Uh, they fixed a bug that apparently would cause the best offense to make her scorpions actually weaker, of all things. Isn't that hilarious? Uh, I'm laughing in, on the inside. For Anders, um, so for Spartan Douglas, his rocket launcher area of effect ring has been reduced from radius of 10 to 8. They're calling the rocket launcher the rocket o death. To pretty much anything as a remote proximity to the blast. Um, the Sentinel Synergy is now swapped with Sentinel Network on the radial. The Sentinel Network cost has been increased um, by 150 supplies and 200 power. And the cooldown for the Sentinel Network has been increased by 20 seconds. So that's interesting. That'll make um, that'll make cars and cameras pretty upset. And uh, so for Decimus, um, they say all hail Mike Beast and the winner 
of the HWC Invitational. He has requested. So, I, okay, let me just stop here for a second. If you won the HWCL, you can request a balance change and they'll put it into the game. Mike Beeston won the HWCL, and so this is his request. He has requested for his balance change that the Warlord having Boundless Siphon be brought back as his requested balance change. This change, along with some other core changes, there's a lot of changing going on here, to how Boundless Siphon works are now being implemented on Decimus. His Banshees aren't going to be as strong anymore, as we have made the Siphon a bit lower on it compared to other units to help lessen the impact in the skies. The Boundless Siphon rework for all units is in effect. The effectiveness of Boundless Siphon on Banshees has been reduced significantly, and the Boundless Siphon once again affects the Warlord. So there you have it. Everyone's going to be playing as Decimus now. For Forge... Forge is a solid leader. He just needs a little bit of kick in the pants. Oh my, Edward. That sounds painful in the basement area, if I should say so myself. Uh, he needs a kick in the pants to be more competitive compared to other leaders in the game. Okay, if someone kicks me in the pants, I'm not going to be more competitive. If someone kicks me in the pants, I'm going to be on the ground screaming and requesting my attorneys to file a lawsuit against whoever kicked me in the pants. Anyway... His hero unit has had some discrepancies compared to others, as well as his scatter bomb is slightly lackluster. I think slightly is an understatement. The XP required for veterancy has been normalized for the Forge Hog compared to other units. Uh, the hero cost has been reduced from 350-275 to 300-275, a 7% damage buff to the scatter bomb on each tier. The number of bombs have been increased at each tier, and the bomb's projectile speed has been increased. Uh, Kensano, it says, this lady is arguably the best UNSC leader right now. Uh, you don't say. I love Morgan, and don't call her by her last name. That's insulting. To help slow her down slightly, we have adjusted her hog drop and her various flame abilities to be less deadly. This saddens me. If I win... Um, maybe I could try and sneak my way into the HWCL this season, and if I win, I'll change all these as my requested uh, balance change. But anyway, the Flame Hog Drop cooldown has been increased by a whopping 30 seconds, and the Inferno and Napalm Missile Damage versus buildings has been reduced by 5%. It's a little bit chunderful, and the, all the wrong reasons. That makes me sad, but it's probably necessary. It makes me sad. Uh, for Colony... Uh, it says, we have fixed a issue in the latest patch to allow the hunter captain's gun to hit infantry. However, this fix has made him in the early game too strong. Um, teleport has apparently replaced mines on the radial. Um, okay. I don't know why every banished leader needs teleport. Kind of makes me ill. Johnson. Johnson still needs a little bit of help. Uh, so the cost reduction of the bunker has been dropped by 50 on each level. Digging in turret damage per second has been buffed by 10%. And a 10% increase to the Mantis shield. Uh, that's it for Johnson. For Commander Jerome, they fixed a bug with the Jackrabbits when getting recon training. Uh, Enduring Salvo has received an 8% buff to damage. And the area effect rings on the bits of the ship falling have been increased from 10 to 13. Jerome's Mantis, the damage has increased on the missile attack when Jerome is piloting the Mantis. They don't say how much, they just say it's been increased. For the Arbiter, uh, the, Arbiter blah, 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 the Arbiter's hero costs have been normalized to put him in line with other leaders. So his costs have been changed from 350, 275 to 300, 275. Serena. Serena has been at the bottom of the barrel for too long. This is so true. Serena has been ass, and I want her to be a top-tier leader right up there with Morgan. We are hoping to host... Okay, it says we are hoping this host of buffs will help bring her up and make her more competitive by improving her overall leader powers and helping buff some of her units. So for the bison, the damage reduction has been buffed by 2%. Uh, the Frost Raven, the Seismic Shot cooldown has been reduced to 45 seconds. The Seismic Blast cooldown has been increased 
to 160 seconds, that doesn't make any sense. If you are trying to make her better, why would you increase the cooldown? Or is this backwards? Am I thinking of this backwards? Does the cooldown increase mean it happens sooner? I don't know. Anyway, a second shot has been added to level 2. That is chunderful. Oh my lord, that's amazing. For the cryobomb, the cooldown has been reduced. Okay, okay. So they're increasing the cooldown of the seismic blast, but they're adding another shot to it. That makes sense. For the cryobomb, they're reducing... Uh, it's cooled down to 160 seconds, and they're adding a second shot to level 2 and level 3. That is amazing. I can't wait to play this arena now. The Glacial Storm, the duration has increased by 5 seconds, and its effectiveness versus ground units has been increased. I might, I'm unprofessional here, but I might say Serena may be the new meta, and I can't wait to try it out. For Yap Yap. We have investigated the Grunt Riders after watching some videos where abnormalities were appearing with them and we found a bug currently there's a bug where the line damage dealt when ramming was dealing 2.5 times the amount of damage it was supposed to so they fixed it for pavium pavium heroes okay i'm sorry pavium's hero did not acquire xp for ventrancy as a similar rate to other heroes we have normalized this that's it for pavium vortis he's quite low in terms of win rates so you're spending some time to make a few changes to his toolkit the Grenadier now has the correct weapon type to be effective against infantry. The Infused Engineer has a cost reduction to match standard engineers. And they, they decrease the Y cooldown by 10 seconds. The Hero buff to Vortis has a 5% DPS increase. That's damage per second. The Infusion Trail duration has been increased by 5 seconds. And the cost of the Hero changed from 350 to 275 to 300 and 275. Now, there's a whole slew of stuff for Blitz, and it's mostly cost reduction stuff to all the cards. Um, and quite honestly, not to be insulting, but not a lot of people care about Blitz, so I'm not going to cover it in this video. But there is a link down in the description for you to check it out. Um, essentially, they're reducing the cost of everything, uh, from what I'm seeing. They're increasing the cost of some stuff. But almost everything I'm seeing, the cost is going down. Um, by not a lot, but it is going down. Anyway, that is what is coming to your Xbox One starting like now, I guess. Um, so post your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say on this. Um, however, I think this will be a lot of fun to play as Serena. Uh, but I don't know who else will be at the top of the pack and I'm so glad that they continue to do this and balance the game over time. It's fantastic. I love the spot that the game is in. Nothing's broken right now. This is all good. I love that Postums and Renzi and all the people at 343 are continuing to work on this. I tip my hat to you, sirs. And this is fantastic. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Andrew from Team Respawn. And I'll see you next time.